regular watchers will know that I always talk about things being built really well, things that can stand the heat and stand the test of time. So things that might be all, uh, you know, able to deal with Australian weather or like Texas, you know, really hot places. It's way more difficult these days because cars have lots more sensors all over them that traditional mechanics might struggle to diagnose the issues and repair them in 5, 10, 20 years time. The, the sort of mechanics at the end of your street. I don't mean a Tesla specialist. So, for example, the sensors inside the rare Falcon Wing doors in a Model X, they will be laborious to repair and diagnose if you don't know really what you're doing. Uh, not that they will go wrong, I don't expect that, but in 10 or 20 years time when your Tesla Model X is not as, ex as you know, it's not as nice and as expensive as it is now, uh, is it going to be viable, economically viable to pay for all the labour to fix these issues that might come up with all of these sensors and the cameras and all the electronics. So it is important that they leave the factory made very well and they can last at least 10 years. That's my concern. But one thing that has been clear to me over the past year or two is that Tesla now seem to be applying Toyota levels of polish to their work. Really, really good quality work. And I'm a Toyota fanboy. Um, as I sometimes say, I do drop it in occasionally. I like Toyotas. Uh, so I'm generally giving them high praise because, frankly, they've earned it. Praise isn't given, it's earned. Thank you very much for joining me. It's really nice to see uh, all these new people subscribing. I had hundreds of new subscribers last month. Uh, I'm Ben Alexander. Welcome to the channel. I talk about the latest EV news from around the world and anything interesting to do with EVs. I make videos every single day. So stick around until the end and then please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Also, I just want to say thank you very much to the people that support my videos on Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube memberships, Patreon. It's really, really appreciated and it really is what makes it possible for me to do this. So links will be below for those of you that are want, wanting to join or have a look. Uh, it's about $3 a month too. So just to let people know as well, this is a really important thing. I really wanted to make this known on this video. There's a campaign called Car for Ukraine. Any car, if you can deliver it to Ukraine, you can let them know and organize to take any old vehicles that you have uh, that you could that could be repurposed in Ukraine. I think generally they might move troops around or move supplies and stuff like that or move around rural areas. Uh, so it doesn't need to be a, a really nice car, just a scrap old car or anything like that, as long as it drives. Um, they will be put to good use. So go check it out on the website, link below, uh, and you can donate it there. Uh, if you're located anywhere in uh, you know the UK or Europe, that would be good, I think. 220 vehicles so far have come from the UK. Some of the reasons that I've been impressed by Tesla recently are because they really have made a big, big effort to ensure their vehicles are much more reliable. And the teething issues that they had only like five, six, seven years ago are generally a thing of the past now. They uh, they have said that they want the motor and the batteries to be able to last something like a million miles, which seems a bit lofty. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but uh, they are doing very, very well. So, for example, the fuse that is, uh, sits on top of the battery of the Model S in, in the olden days, you know, in the early days, sorry, uh, you take the battery down and on top there'd be a fuse. That fuse would often blow. And uh, that's, you know, it's quite an expensive thing to pay someone to pull a battery down to replace a little fuel. It really is this big. It's not big. Uh, that's now not an issue. The reliability of the cars has been far better in this last few years. I think generally 2019 onwards is the turning point for Tesla. Uh, people are reporting going 100,000 miles quite often now with no major issues, just the small things that you'd expect from a vehicle having driven a hundred thousand miles, but the drivetrain, such as the battery and motor, all perfectly fine. I would still personally prefer, I think, a really basic car with no sensors, nothing special, no lane assist, no nothing like that. Maybe cruise control though. Just a plain old car that I can repair myself when it goes wrong. I found out recently just how hard Tesla have been trying to fix issues and overheating problems in the main screen is one of them. Uh, 
The large screen that sits in the middle of the car used to always stop working and have issues and it was an expensive repair to take. I know some people watching this now have probably paid for that repair. Um, a recent teardown of the newer screens post 2018-2019 uh, show that they generally use an Intel chip inside, obviously that was the old one as well, uh, but now they connect the electronics right at the back of the screen to a large heatsink which is connected to like a heat exchanger which has glycol running through it which is basically coolant. Uh, so it's liquid cooled. I would love to know if BYD do the same because I don't know if they do I imagine not, given that the BYD screen does the rotatey thing. I don't see how they can plumb that at all. I don't really know how they could do that. Maybe they can. So hopefully it will withstand Australia's heat in three, four, five years, because electronics uh, very often hate heat. It's a big killer for electronics. And very often things like electric bikes and electric scooters, for example, they are allowed to run hot, which shortens the life of them in order to make it cheaper to produce them. So uh, that makes basically manufacturing a bit simpler and just cheaper. I really do like, however, if you use a Xiaomi scooter, the electric kick scooter, uh, the main speed board, which is the bit that usually gets hot in e-bikes and scooters, is bolted to the frame upside down and then they use thermal paste to transfer heat away from it, uh, so the, away from the transistors, uh, you know, on the control board into the frame. So they have at least tried to make it last. And I actually once had one, I've had a few, um, and one of them had over 7,000 kilometers on it, and it still rode perfectly fine. So just as Tesla do with their batteries, um, on this screen in the middle of Tesla's, they're most likely not just going to run a fan over a radiator with the glycol running through to take out the heat energy, uh, but they'll probably use the car's AC system, the actual air conditioning, to keep things cool so that the batteries never get too hot, or the screen, for example, it's probably, I'm imagining, all tied in. If you live in Australia or somewhere really hot, like Texas in the US, then you will know exactly just how hot things get just by sitting in the sun. And I'm not just talking about a really hot summer's day in Britain, for example. I'm talking about when electronics are in places that actually they just bake, you know? They're like an oven. So in Brisbane here in summer, it's relentless every single day, pretty much. It's just really, really immensely hot. Um, and I used to live in Scandinavia, so I'm actually kind of used to being in the UK and Scandinavia. And even after a while of being in Brisbane, the heat is just relentless and immense every day, week after week after week. So I get a sort of thrill from using things in really cold climates. Maybe some of you know what I mean, but I still to this day get really excited about warming up a car or something like that when it's cold or lighting a fire in the house when it's minus 20 outside. I don't get that sort of pleasure or that thrill from a warm climate. I just don't have any of that. Uh, so that's kind of a, a sad thing, but it, so it's a tough climate, you know, to live in a hot place. I think warm climates are difficult for most things, even air conditioning units. Um, an interesting little thing, some people use little sprayers or little misters um, on the backs of air conditioning units. Uh, to keep the fins on the outside of the air conditioning unit outside uh, and they just spray a little bit of mist on it and that actually improves uh, the, uh, the efficiency uh, by 10% or so when you look at the statistics when you run the amount of you know the energy used without or with misting the air conditioner outside just for a little bit of water spraying on it. It's also really interesting to see the level of innovation Tesla have put into their Gigapress. And it's actually reduced the cost of making Teslas by quite a lot. And it's actually really difficult to get a fair idea of the actual cost saving. So rather than just insult you and pretend I know, because I really don't, I'll just say I don't know. But Tesla have said it is a big difference. It's like 30 or 40%, I think. And reports online just state it. It's like 40% from using the Gigapress versus the old fashioned methods. I'm not sure about that. It seems a bit too crazy. 
And, uh, you know, Tesla will be making the Tesla Model 2, which, by the way, isn't going to be called the Model 2 when it is released, um, with a new sort of system whereby when they build their cars, uh, they um, don't build it across a building in a line. They will basically put it in one spot with lots of people around it, build it, move on to the next one. That is apparently an even cheaper way to build a car. And the thing that I don't understand is why they aren't doing that in other cars if it's cheaper to make a car like that. Any ideas? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, genuinely really interested to know what people think of that. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I'm sure some of you will have some brilliant ideas though because there are a whole amount of uh, engineers and smart, clever people who watch my videos. If you enjoyed today's video, then please click the like button for me so that YouTube know that people are enjoying my videos and consider subscribing for more daily videos about electric vehicles.